Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. With Tarun Gogoi's demise, an era in Assam's political arena has come to an end. Gogoi had led four assembly polls since 2001 and won three of them for his Congress party. In fact, he succeeded in making a hat-trick and remained chief minister for 15 years at a stretch, thus becoming Assam's longest-serving chief minister. He must have done quite a few things right that won him the three major state elections. With his death too, he has continued to do things right. Yes, viewers, with his death, Torun Gogoi has in a way once again united Assam. From the ruling BJP, the Congress's main rival, to the radical rebel group, the Ulfa Independent, to the All Assam Students' Union, the student group which rarely praises political leaders. Everyone has spoken highly of the man and publicly recognized his contribution to Assam and its people. Yes, Torun Gogoi's debt is an irreparable loss to Assam. But what about the Congress, the party Gogoi served loyally for six decades or more? What could be the state of the Congress in Assam after Torun Gogoi? Congress leader Rahul Gandhi said his party in Assam would trade on the path shown by Gogoi. Can the party leaders do it? Will Gogoi's absence impact the Congress's prospects at the 2021 Assembly polls? To discuss the subject, I am joined by an esteemed panel. Veteran Congress leader Pavan Singh Ghatawar joins me from Guwahati. Congress's vocal Lok Sabha MP, Mr. Pradhut Bordoloi, is also with me from Guwahati. At the studios, I have veteran leader and former Congress MP Kirib Chaliha. I'm also joined from Guwahati University by professor and commentator, Dr. Okhil Ranjan Datta. And joining me from Shillong is Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, professor at Nehu and a well-known commentator. Before we begin the discussions, let's listen in to some prominent voices on Torun Gogoi, the man. Gogoiji was not just a leader of Assam, he was a formidable chief minister and he was a national leader. He was my teacher, my guru, and he explained to me, like nobody can, I would say, uh, there is a personal loss for me. As a Manubiya Sintar Odhikari, Ganotantik Sintar Odhikari, as an Obhigo Natak, Akhame Hirwal. Akhamti Jorjor Akhamot, Hantir Botavaron, Gurayonar Babe, the Ketorji Possesta, K Possesta, Zati Sirodin Monotakibo. Radonotic Babe at Hararabohan, at a Radonotic Zuborabohan Kotil, Rastio Dolor Agorki Neta, who is Zatiota Badi Adorhore, Homer Homador, Proti Tanji to Dristi Asit, Ba Homer, Zatio Zibon or Homosa, Homadhan Kribo Karne, Radil Possesta, Tarkan Agorki, Zatiota Badi Neta, Hisabe Homer Isa Monotakibo. Agoraki Mohan Neta, Mirajabahi Herald. আর মই ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে এগৰাকি পিটিক হেৰুৱাৰ দৰে অৱস্থা হৈছে তৰুণ গগৈ ডাঙৰিয়া হসা অৰ্থত অসমৰ ৰাজনীতিৰ এটা যুগক প্ৰতিনিধিত্ব কৰিছিল তেখেতৰ মহা প্ৰয়ানৰ লগে লাগে অসমৰ ৰাজ ৰাজনীতিৰ এটা ডাঙৰ যুগৰ শেখ হল বুলি মই অনুভৱ কৰো তৰুণ গগৈ ডাঙৰিয়াই গুপ্ত হত্যাৰ বিভীষিকাৰ পৰা আমাৰ ৰাজ্যখনক এটা স্বাভাৱিক জীৱনলৈ লৈ আহিছিল all right, uh, there you heard the prominent voices starting from Rahul Gandhi to Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonwal to Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma, Samujal Bhattasarji, Dipanka Nath, President of ASU, and of course, uh, until recently, ASU General Secretary Lurin Juti Gogoi. Let me go straight to you, uh, Mr. Pavan Singh Hatwar. Uh, Mr. Pavan Singh Hatwar, Torun Gogoi is no more. Uh, you know, the void which his demise has created, perhaps. Uh, will never be filled so easily. Let's put it that way. Uh, people from all across the uh, society, social and political spectrum were present at his funeral today. My question to you, Mr. Pavan Singh Hatwar, uh, how do you see your party? Because that is the identity of Torun Gogoi initially. He has been with the Congress, a loyal Congress soldier for more than 60 years. So how do you see the Congress in Assam now? You see, first of all, let me pay my respect to 
our leader Torun Gogoi ji. We have just completed his cremation today. And you are right that he was a towering personality of Assam Congress. And he has built the Congress party in such a manner that definitely it, he, his departure has created a void in the Congress party. But I have the firm belief that though he is not there, but we, his legacy will be always with us and his presence will be always with us and definitely he will, he will try, all the congressmen in Assam, to try to strengthen the Congress party from the grassroots level. And I personally feel that will be the best tribute to Torun Gogoi who has given his lifetime to build Congress uh, in, the, uh, in Assam and the whole of the Northeast region. Absolutely, absolutely. Very well said there, Mr. Pawan Singh Ghatwar. Mr. Ghatwar had worked very, very closely with Mr. Torun Gogoi for many years now. Uh, and he was uh, the vice president of the Congress party when Torun Gogoi was uh, 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 installed as the PCC president uh, when the Congress was in a very difficult situation in Assam. Let me turn to you, uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi, in the last three days, since his death, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi, from a Congress neta, Torun Gogoi has, trans been, has been transformed into a janta ka neta, you know, cutting across the political and social spectrum. The love and respect which people showed to him, uh, you know, the, 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 the voices which emerged after his death, uh, the way people uh, talked about him in the last three days, it is very clear, perhaps we did not gauge we were not able to understand that he cuts across the political spectrum earlier, but now it has been proved beyond doubt that he has been transformed from a Congress leader to a Jantaka leader. Yeah, uh, you must realize actually, Sri Tarun Gogoiji, he represents. A, he was actually a true liberal democrat. It's a triumph of liberal democracy because he could transcend the sectarian boundaries that some of our political parties and ideologies try to propound. Uh, you see, Tarun Gogoiji has uh, given narratives and paradigms to carry on the pluralism of our society. You cannot segregate, you cannot isolate sections of people with sectarian ideology. So I think uh, the people of Assam cutting across caste, communi communities, religions, you know, linguistic barriers, they have all endorsed that Torun Gogoi Dangoria was a true liberal democrat, and we have a relevance of such political ideology in a pluralistic society like ours. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you. I have a lot of questions for all of you in this panel, very esteemed panel indeed, veteran Congress leaders present on this panel, uh, and of course, very, very well-known commentators. Let me go to you, uh, Mr. Kirip Chalia. Mr. Kirip Chalia, you have seen and worked with Torun Gogoi for such a long time. You are also aware inside out of the Congress party uh, and uh, the various nuances within the Congress party in Assam. My question is, that's the question I began with by asking veteran uh, party, your veteran colleague, uh, Mr. Pavan Singh Hatwar. Now, uh, Torun Gugo has unified Assam in a way with the voices that uh, I have been saying that right from the last two days. But my question is now, we have barely six months left for the elections. Uh, a lot of people will be asking the question, although in the last five years, nearly five years since the Congress's defeat in 2016, uh, Torun Gogoi did not hold any party position. He was just an MLA representing his Titabor seat. But, but for all practical purposes, uh, he was the most uh, uh, important Congress leader. He was the most sought-after voice in the Congress party in Assam. 
In view of this, I'm asking you this question, how do you look at the Congress in Assam after Torun Gogoi, particularly in view of the impending elections? So it's a, a difficult question that you're asking. Uh, I'm not a, uh, a prophet to, uh, to you know, talk about the future because you know what has happened has happened suddenly. And Torun Gogoi's departure, as I mentioned last time, Torun Gogoi's uh, departure from the political scene and Congress politics has put us also in, in some kind of quandary. But as I told you, that we expected that, uh, that Congress party will go for election uh, under Torun Gogoi's leadership and guidance. Not necessarily that he will hold a post or he will be chief minister candidate, nothing like that. But you know, he was. You know, we we wanted him to be the unifying factor, uh, the person who can manage the contradictions and give some directions to the to the, to the party, and also, also uh, have an, make an appeal to the people in a uh, in a in a right. proper manner mm -hmm. to to encounter the present uh, ruling coalition, which is quite quite strong. Unfortunately, suddenly his uh, and, and and I think I think you know when uh, many you know top senior leaders went to Delhi and discussed these matters, then the question of his age came. I'm not going to divulge the details now. I may come over come about it after ten or ten twenty days. I'm right. thinking of speaking mm -hmm. it out to the people because I'm also seeking guidance from the people. Uh, right. There are people <coughs> who say that he's uh, he's now too easy. Now why do you involve him? He needs rest. But you know, we, we pointed out that you know, Cong if Congress has to stand united, and if Congress has to once again regain its uh, lost uh, strength, then you know, you need a personality who has the who is the capability to unify all people oh. and also bring in additions. Absolutely, now, absolutely. Tarun Gogoi's departure has created a void. Um, we can say, you know, it's a normal uh, habit, hab habitual attitude to say, well, a man may go, but he'll come up and we'll follow his ideals and, you know, we'll emerge stronger. I agree to all that. But, you know, we have five months. Yeah. But you're saying that it's a void and you are expecting uh, the party to have been guided by Torun Gogoi, although uh, you, you didn't mean that he would be the chief ministerial candidate and so on and so forth. But on that note, let me turn to you, Dr. Okiranjan Dutta. Uh, Dr. Akhilanjan Dutta, there are two things. Now, we have seen tall leaders in Assam like Bimala Prasad Chaliha, Gopinath Bordoloi, uh, Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed. Of course, he was uh, not much into Assam politics except being a minister. Uh, but the point uh, here is uh, Dr. Akhilanjan Dutta, uh, in recent memory, in contemporary political and social history of Assam, electoral history of Assam, Torun Gogoi was the most formidable political leader. He was a stalwart, he was a colossal figure in Assam's politics. Therefore, today we have seen uh, political leaders across party lines showing po so much of respect, so much of admiration for him, uh, uh, you know, in the last couple of days. Now, the, my question is in two parts. Assam after Torun Gogoi, will we see a leader of that stature soon? Uh, and what about the Congress party after Torun Gogoi? Very briefly, the opening remarks. So I, I, I have two things to point out, you know, yes, Torun Gogoi's demise will create a void in the Congress party. But we need to remember, if you look back, when Jawaharlal Nehru died, did anybody, any, could anybody imagine that there will be a leader like uh, Indira Gandhi in Indian National Congress? Or when Indira Gandhi died, could anybody imagine that there will be a leader like, uh, you know, Rajiv Gandhi? Or for that matter, when Rajiv Gandhi died, did anybody imagine that there will be a leader like Dr. Manmohan Singh, for that matter, Sonia Gandhi, and so on and so forth. Even if you go back to Assam's politics, when Hiteshwar Soikya died, could anybody imagine that there will be a, there will be a person like Torun Gogoi, uh, who will be a very formidable liberal leader and who could, uh, you know, run the uh, you know government for three ten years? Therefore, I think I am not that uh, you know pessimistic about uh, the emergence of a leader or for that matter consolidation of the party after the demise of, uh, you know, Torun Gogoi. But my understanding is just opposite. Till he was very active, you know, two months, three months back, you know, uh, Congress was, Torun Gogoi personally and the, uh, and the Congress party was constantly attacked and the misrule of 15, was, 15 years was the highlight. 
by the you know ruling BJP regime. But once he died, everybody started talking about the good things that his government did. Torun Gogoi's government did. Congress government did. I think it has given back Congress some legitimacy of reclaiming the good things that the Congress government did. I think thereby it has provided uh, some kind of strength to the organization for its own revival. And okay. looking at the kind of popularity that, uh, you know, Torun Gogoi had earned through his role and through his unprofessionally professional capacity of right. uh, mixing up with every section of the society, I think the new generation of the leadership will be learning, uh, you know, to learn, will be learning some of the qualities Absolutely. from Torun Gogoi and that yeah. will also help towards the revival of the party, which is in a very bad shape today. I think very interesting comments made by Dr. Okhilaranjan Dutta there. Uh, Dr. Prasanjit Bisas, I'm coming back to you, uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi. But before that, let me quickly go to Dr. Prasanjit Biswas. Okhilaranjan Dutta made two very interesting points. He said that the manner in which the, the ruling party, top leaders of the BJP in Assam have acknowledged, the manner in which they acknowledged Torun Gogoi's contribution to revival of the state's economy when he first became chief minister in 2001, the, uh, how, the, how he controlled the law and order situation. Uh, Dr. Okhilaranjan Dutta is saying that that will help the Congress regain its legitimacy of some, what it had done, the good work it had done in the last 15 years of its rule. Uh, so do you agree to that? How do you look at it? Do you have a different perspective? Uh, more or less, I agree with him, but uh, the nuances would be different because uh, society throws up new leadership every time there is a vacuum. So now that there is a void and a vacuum, uh, from the vacuum what will emerge is different sections of the society throwing up a set of leaders who collectively would engage themselves in a certain kind of a politicking within the Congress party as well as outside the Congress party especially the failure of the current regime which is ruling Assam will be one major tip of point for the Congress party to revive itself. The other thing that Tarun Gogoi did is to build up a rainbow coalition, the task of which is still rolling on. We can see Badruddin Ajmol, we can see Karbis, Dimachaj, Ravas, Moran, Motok, Missing, every small group were brought together in a common rainbow coalition by Tarun Gogoi. Therefore, Congress has got a very nice work done and carved out a path before them. And they can just follow the footsteps of Tarun Gogoi to complete the task. Of course, BJP also has this tremendous task of resisting Congress. Uh, and I don't know how the whole cookie will crumble. But it seems to me that the impact of Tarun Gogoi's death will actually create a greater unification and a greater okay. possibility of a rainbow coalition mm -hmm. in the Congress party. All right. That's what. All right. Now, very interesting way of putting it. Let me go to Mr. Pradut Bordoloi. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi, you have heard, uh, you know, both Dr. Okhilaranjan Dutta and, okay, uh, my, uh, I want a little early uh, uh, statement from my producers about, uh, the, I think uh, Pradut Bordoloi's line is slightly disrupted at this point in time. Uh, Pavan Singh Ghatuar, you know, from 2016 onwards, from 2016 onwards, Mr. Pavan Singh Ghatuar, we, we, we need to have Pavan Singh Ghatuar on the screen. Uh, from 2016 onwards, Mr. Ghatuar, Torun Gogoi did not hold any party post, as I have said. Uh, but yet he was the uncrowned leader of the Congress in Assam for all practical purposes, isn't it? Uh, what does this mean, Mr. Ghatuar? Yes, yes. And he was the visible face of our Assam Congress in Assam. And, and, and he, was a, he was a darling of the electronic and print media of Assam for any matter, whether it is regional or it is related to Assam or the national. And he is always there from the Congress party to give his view. Uh, as, uh, as the uh, representative <coughs> of the Congress. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi, both the two commentators on the show, uh, they're saying that, you know, 
now that uh, your main rival, uh, that is the BJP, the BJP top brass in Assam in the last two days have acknowledged publicly and very openly, in fact, while paying tribute to Mr. Torun Gogoi, they have acknowledged, even the ASU has acknowledged that how Torun Gogoi tackled the difficult situation, the security situation arising out of insurgency and the acute financial crisis and how that laid the foundation for Assam's development in the years to come. Uh, it's, not, it's not very common to find opposition leaders uh, or leaders of the ruling party saying that like that of an opposition leader. Perhaps that is where Torun Gogoi was different. That is where his stature was. Now, Dr. Okilranjan Dutto is saying, now the BJP will find it really difficult to pin down the Congress party of, of not doing anything during their tenure. So do you agree with this assessment? Will it help the Congress because we have an election coming in six months from now? Well, Vazbir, you know the character of the BJP. They are uh, very infamous for doing the somersaults. They would say something now because they, if they have admitted that Tarun Gogoi had this charisma, had this you know, acceptability among the people of Assam, they must have done it very grudgingly. Because I'm very sure that... Uh, Why do you say you know, that? Why do you say that? Nearing the election. Why do you so say they, they, grudgingly? They have always been doing this. Don't, 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 you, don't you remember the, the infamous words of uh, the BJP minister, Himanta Horma? When he was in Congress party, he no, criticized no, no, the today, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, saying that pipelines... No, 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 no let saying, us not you know, talk. No, would, no, let us not bring in those things assault. today. Let us have a let us have a reasonable debate today. We are this Torun no, Gogo is no I more. Agree, you have you I, have I, cremated I, him I, only. I agree. We have I, he I, was I, cremation took place only a few hours ago. No, uh, let saying, us let us analyze this, it. No, no, we are analyzing I, I the just, situation. I just wanted. No, 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 no. What I basically wanted to say today, if BJP has uh, acknowledged. They must have done it very grudgingly because they, have, they must have seen the spontaneity among the people of Assam, how Torun Gogoi was loved and how he could transcend the boundaries. Because he was, he was never a sectarian politician. He, could, he, could, he was very inclusive. At the same time, all his policies and programs were always to encourage and coexist with the pluralism of the society. But, you know, this BJP, as you know, they always create polarization on the, on the basis of religion, at least. So that is why, and now they are saying it, because they are they're saying it grudgingly. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm very sure that BJP will revert back to their original, you know, narrative. And we, from the Congress party, okay. following... The paradigm of Tarun Gogoi, we have to give a counter narrative. That is the that is the road. Okay, but but but, is, you know, but that is what laying but ahead. But a more a road as ahead. as as Dr. Prasanjit Biswas has said, the more pragmatic way to move ahead is to follow Tarun Gogoi's ideals. Do you agree with that, uh, Mr. Kripp Chalia? You have to be pragmatic in politics. Absolutely, uh, uh, that's uh, what I'm saying. To absolutely, because because I want to tell you something, my own experience. When we formed the government in 2001, you know, after the, you know, the turmoil of uh, Assam agitation and AGP rule and secret killings and then, you know, all kinds of uh, underground activities, killings, violence. When we formed the government, I was very fortunate to be included in the ministry and I was the youngest minister at that time. And under Torun Gogoiji, I was a minister of state for whom he gave me a lot of responsibilities. That, is, that was a time I could see how Torun Gogoi has his own solution. You know, he actually, more than a politician, I, I believe that Torun Gogoi also has been a social scientist. Because, because in a conflict ridden state like Assam, Torun Gogoi, with his own homegrown knowledge and in you know, a vast experience, he has been able to give All right. paradigms. Yeah. 
those no, paradigms no, are going to be there. Absolutely. That's what you're saying. And we have to follow those paradigms. Absolutely. Mr. Kirib Chalia, how do you look at it? Uh, you know, how, how do you think it is so easy? Because your leader, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, also said yesterday that, uh, you know, Doug, uh, I mean, he's no more. Torn Gogo is no more. But that will not be that will not impact the congress party because the congress party will follow the ideals set by torun gogoi that is what rahul gandhi had said yesterday uh, but my question to you mr kirip chalia is it so easy to follow the or because it depends on the personalities because uh, you know torun gogoi was a different personality he was he could reach out to the opposition he had his personal rapport with different sections of the people he had an open and liberal mindset but uh, various other people within the party uh, will only look at the bjp as a, as their main rival and nothing more than that see uh, let us let us uh, understand the context. Yeah, the tall leader has fallen; he has departed. We have just cremated him today. Yes, I don't think we can make uh, uh, critical appraisals of, of his performance or what the future holds. Now there were there were stray comments. Yes, we can go for the straight com stray comments like you know what Okila said that look Nehruji had gone and Indraji came and Indraji had gone Rajivji came. I, I, I think, you know, but... Uh, what but that I was, was a political I was, family. I was, I was, was no, I, what I was saying was, it was not so simple as that. When Nehruji died, there was a phase when Lal Bharu Shastriji was also there. Yeah. Then came Indraji. She also need, needed a lot of time to make, get matured. So there's a gap. We are talking about the immediate. Now, Tarunda has fallen at such a time, he has left us, when we're having plans that he'll continue. Then, it's, that is why I was referring to the, uh, to the setbacks. Now, second point is, you know, when uh, when it when there were taller leaders who who enjoyed tremendous respect, and at the time of their death also they were eulogized like anything by all sections. Yeah. Now, now praising some leader uh, by opposition is a personal uh, attribute to the to the leader. Sina was a great leader. Gulab Burbar was a very popular leader. Absolutely. Uh, uh, for example, even Mohanta had unparalleled popularity at one point of time. But you know what? Nothing remains constant. Things change. Change is the way of life, in fact. But what Tarun Gogoi could do was, I would say, he's, in his death, he has transcended his popularity and he has transcended, he has gone above his stature. Absolutely. That, you know, everybody has, will have to agree. Absolutely. But I don't think any political party can take benefit out of it or anybody can you know, uh, in any way demean it. That's my view. Now, I think, I think that, answers, that answers the question, yeah, Kripchale. Yeah. I'll have to uh, uh, hold you on here. You have to uh, request you to hold on. I'll have to go for a short break. Uh, don't go. We'll be right back. We are in, in the midst of a very engaging discussion on Assam after Torun Gogoi. Don't go away. Welcome back. A straight question to you, Mr. Pabban Singh Ghatwar. Will Torun Gogoi's absence impact the Congress's prospects in 2021? This is a very clear-cut, simple, straight question. You Mr. See, Ghatwar. After his said demise, definitely it is a setback for all of us. But I think uh, his departure will and and the people as the people uh, are coming out to pay their respect cutting across the political spectrum yeah. and i think that will enthuse the congress worker in assam and they will very uh, wholeheartedly dedicate it uh, for building the assam and try to regain the lost glory of congress in assam now one more question uh, mr ghatwar you know, the panelists on this show now are saying that Torun Gogoi was a unifying factor. My first question, do you agree that Torun Gogoi was a unifying factor within the Assam Congress? Because it's an open secret that like other parties also, there are many lobbies within the Assam Congress even today. 
definitely definitely he was the uh, unifying uh, factor in assam congress and everybody is used to look towards him for a final say in any disputed matter or whether it is in the party matter or selecting candidate uh, uh, by and large he used to be the final uh, uh, his word is used to be the final word in regard to the assam congress okay uh, dr okhiranjan datta uh, you know you have made some very interesting points which uh, <coughs> but kiripchalia uh, doesn't think that you know nobody uh, should take try to take political advantage but mr pawan singh hatwar has also said a very interesting thing whether you deliberately want to take advantage or not uh, that's a different issue but the congress workers and supporters mr ghatwar says will be enthused seeing that seeing the attention that torun gogoi uh, saw seeing how people talked about him in the last 3 days seeing all that you know the P congress workers and supporters will be enthused across the state ahead of the elections and that is definitely going to be a boost for the party do you agree no see uh, i i'm a bit critical about it but when i said that uh, his demise has forced the uh, you know ruling bjp to appreciate the contributions that he made towards the revival of the economy and also to bring back normalcy political normalcy or law and order you know normal law and order situation back to the state uh, you know they have uh, you know agree, uh, you know they have appreciated it but look at the statements they are not telling the congress government they are giving entire credit only to mr torun gogoi and that has been very very strategic they are not telling that a party did it a government as a whole did it no, why will they say why should we no 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 okhil ranjan datta no 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 why why should we expect anybody to yeah. talk about the party why should we if people have said they have said about torun gogoi and that is that is fine no, because i'm telling it i'm telling it why why I, do you I, expect I, anybody let, let, let to talk about it. the party let, let, yes yes let me explain it let, no 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 definitely definitely now now that the implication is this that because you had a visionary leader like that because you had a towering personality like that you could do it now you don't have the leader so your future is not that bright that implication is there what i'm suggesting is that electoral politics is different electoral politics will be very very challenging as i was telling in another show uh, of yours that now bjp has consolidated its own vote banks remember they have captured the sahajana gushti they have captured many of the janazatis tribals and they have also captured the bengali hindu bengalis they have solid vote banks now now as pawan singh gatwar has said and he rightly said it it has enthused the political uh, you know party leaders or party uh, workers at the grassroots but this doesn't necessarily guarantee any political mileage okay. Okay. in terms of uh, let's, electoral let's, outcomes i'll come back to I'll, keep it in mind i'll be back to you dr kiranjan datta before coming to you dr prasanjit biswas let me go once again to mr pradut bordoloy uh, mr pradut bordoloy today you are also a veteran leader of the congress party uh, now you had seen it all as far as assam politics was concerned and now you are the lok sabha mp now my question to you in this elections uh, are you going to depend on collective leadership now that a towering personality he may not have held any post but as kirip chalia said uh, the party was hoping to go approach the 2021 elections under the guidance of torun gogoi he may not have been the president of the party he may not have may not even have been nominated the chief ministerial candidate but the party was expecting his guidance and direction to be shown during the 2021 election but unfortunately that did not happen now my question to you mr pradut bordloy will the congress in assam Uh, the, the best option do you think is a collective leadership and approach the 2021 elections what is your view so obviously uh, we will miss torun gogoi dangoria because he was like a you know he was like a colossus he was which is uh, you know as i said 
uh, whatever he said and whatever he tried to do for the party, uh, first and foremost, he was a diehard uh, congressman, congressy, and he always tried to bring back the party to power. So uh, he has shown us some part, and in our collective wisdom, as you say, you know, all of us will have to work unitedly and we'll have to take on the BJP in the elections of 2021. But usually, usually an election is fought, uh, you know, under the leadership of a tall party leader, under the leadership of someone who is directly or indirectly, overtly or covertly projected. Uh, what could be the Congress strategy? What do you expect in the coming days? You see, uh, as of now, we are doing pretty well because our organization is very strong. As it is, you know, the Congress DNA has been very strong in Assam. Assam is one of the states in the country where the organization is very, very strong. And today, even with the leadership of our, say, Ripun Bara, who is the president of the Pradesh Congress Committee, He's a very hard, he's a very hard worker and we are all working together. The Congress party is going to bat uh, under the leadership of the PCC president and all of us are going to help him and contribute whatever manner possible. And I'm very sure, I'm confident that we'll be able to take on the right. BJP this time. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pradut Bordlo there saying that the Congress will bat under the leadership of the PCC president, Mr. Ripun Bora, and that all of them are going to work together with him uh, to achieve their objective. Now, Ms. Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, uh, you know, as, uh, as Mr. Prabhan Singh Ghatwar has said, as you have also said that Torun Gogoi was a unifying factor. Uh, it is not surprising to find lobbies within political parties and the Congress in Assam is also reported to be having several lobbies, but that is not surprising. That is not something which is unique or that is not something which, which, which has not happened anywhere else in the past. My question is, how challenging will it be for the Congress to face the 2021 elections without a person, without a person of Torun Gogoi's stature? Yeah, I mean, it's quite challenging, but Congress has uh, found a way through Tarun Gogoi's work because Tarun Gogoi has made this initial attempt to combine with AIUDF. Now, depending on the BTR election results, Congress will also have a new alliance partner. Uh, maybe UPPL can also become a new alliance partner. Similarly, I can see that there are a variety of alliance partners that are emerging by keeping Congress at the center. And this politics of alliance, along with Congress's various groups coming together, will create a strong platform and it will connect itself to a variety of sections of masses in various parts of Assam. Uh, so there will be a kind of a micro-politics of uh, managing various blocks through their lobbies, which will all come together in a combined coalition. And this was Mr. Gogoi's game plan. And I think the game plan is very well fleshed out. Now it depends on Mr. Ripun Bora, Mr. Pradod Bora, and other Pradod leaders, Bora those Bora. who are leaders at various levels. They can coordinate, they can emerge and st stitch together the unfinished work of Mr. Tarun Gogoi. And that will give a very strong face to the Congress party. And I'm hopeful that Congress will be able to better its own prospects in the next elections. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kirib Shalia, how, how do you look at it? The, almost the same question goes to you. What would be the Congress strategy? Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordlo has said that the Congress has a very dynamic uh, PCC president in Ripun Bora and that Congress will bat under Ripun Bora's leadership and everybody will work together to achieve the ultimate objective. That is, of course, every party has this objective, only one objective, that of winning the elections. What are your thoughts? Well, I think, uh, as I said, I don't think today, when we are here to analyze the impact of the loss of a great leader, I don't think I should make any 
political comments or even critical analysis. I'll, I'll definitely do it in the next uh, seven days or 10 days time. But before that, I suffice it to say, that don't forget, after all, uh, yeah, with all due respect to Torunda's memory and his performance, that in spite of his being such a big popular leader, we lost the last election and we had some of the worst results during his time also. So now these things happen. No, so you the, lost the, the last what, elections what, because of anti-incumbency. 15 that's years what I'm that's what in I'm a saying. row. Okay, whatever is the reason. So, so now, so certain electoral politics is uh, happened because of number of reasons. But the fact that in spite of an, an electoral reverse, he could maintain this kind of popularity which has been exhibited today. That is what one must learn, not for political knowledge, but for development of one's personality. Absolutely. To, do, Ab to, no, to, 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 to think what one should achieve in life. No, I think the tribute that you get on his on the death of your life, that is the biggest thing one can have. Because, that is because, because there is something beyond politics. Because there he is something was, beyond yes, politics. Yes, he was not, it was not because of his political acumen, political sagacity, but because of how great he was as a man and how, how close he was to the common people. You know, it was the common people who were, oh, who, who, whose love was exhibited to a greater extent Absolutely. than what the BJP Absolutely. leaders or there, top there are, ministers were There saying. are other things beyond politics as well uh, that has been demonstrated uh, by several political leaders, including, of course, Torun Gogoi uh, in the last three days since his demise. Uh, Mr. Pawan Singh Gatwar, do you think, again, we are coming back uh, to the core issue, Assam, after Gogoi or the Congress in Assam after Gogoi. Question to you, do you think your party has enough charismatic leaders to do or do you think your party has enough crowd pullers today? Because that is a key election winning element, isn't it? Pulling crowds, ability to pull crowds. Mr. Ghatwar. You see, uh, if you see the past uh, election in, in Assam or other part of the country, I think the situation created the leader and definitely everybody will agree that we don't have that uh, charismatic figure of Torun Gogoi in the coming election. But a, a collective, if we are, we will be able to uh, give a collective leadership, I think the people of Assam will come forward and, and, and definitely they will give their blessing to Congress. Collective leadership holds the key for Congress. That is what Pavan Singh Ghatwar has said. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pradut Bordloy, uh, do you agree with what your colleague uh, has said? Collective leadership holds the key and situation creates leaders. Uh, you know, the show must go on after all. You know, the show has to go on and situation creates leaders. Yes, I agree as of now that there would always be first among equals. Eventually, somebody has to emerge, and that is that is what is the you know that will depend on the dynamics of the you know uh, campaign and other things. But uh, as of now, of course, we have to, and there is no doubt that we have to all work together. We have to be united, and uh, the, the you know the Congress leadership that we have. In the state today, as I said earlier, we are very capable, we are very competent, we are experienced, and I think we can do a very good job. Absolutely. Uh, I'm running short of time. Uh, Dr. Okhilaranjan Dutta, uh, final comments from you. Uh, there are two, three things. One, the void. Second, the elections are there. Do you think the alliance dynamics is going to take a hit? Because it was the same Torun Gogoi who said uh, who was not interested in having any alliance with the AIUDF, going to the extent of saying, you know, who is Badruddin Ajmal, thereby trying not to give any importance to the AIUDF. Now, the same Torun Gogoi being extremely pragmatic, just a, a couple of months ago, he said he was all for an alliance with the AIUDF. And of course, he has always been saying that even the AGP is welcome to come and join the Congress and so on and so forth. These are some of the statements that he had made, he has been making before he was sick. Uh, you know, do you think uh, the alliance politics within the Congress party is going to be hit or do we think the present leadership will take it through? 
No, see, it is a compulsion on the part of the political leadership or leadership of the Congress to go in for alliance. They don't have any other way. And they understand it well that BJP has penetrated into, uh, you know, different uh, communities in a very strong manner. And I have mentioned particularly the two tribes and tribal communities and that of the Bengali Hindus. And that has given BJP a lot of advantages along with the populist schemes that they have been, uh, you know, undertaking in a very enthusiastic manner, uh, you know, as we approach to 2021 elections. Now, if you look at the alliance politics, it was not only Torun Gogoi, Ripun Bora has also been taking active interest in it. If you look at the press conferences in the recent past, they have understood very well that without any, uh, without alliances with different political parties, including AIDF, Congress is, will not be in a position to challenge BJP. Therefore, I think that they will take it forward, particularly the alliance thing right. or political, uh, new political equations, they will be uh, pursuing uh, with, uh, you know, same enthusiasm. Absolutely. Uh, Prasenjit Biswas, your final comments. Yeah. Uh, one has to re-listen the last message of Tarun Gogoi, where he had appealed to the peasantry, tea garden laborers, tribes and sub-tribes and communities in Borak and Brahmaputra Valley to come together, uh, build up a new unified Assam, which can stop religious polarization. So this particular appeal of Tarun Gogoi tells us that there is a way out of the current polarization and division in Assam, I think he has thrown up a great political vision for everyone to emulate. Okay. And I think this is the way through which Assam can progress and there can be a generational shift of politics. Right. Uh, Mr. Pawan Singh Gatwar, Rahul Gandhi yesterday said a very significant thing, which I have said a little while ago, that a party would carry on and try to follow the ideals of Torun Gogoi. My question, would you agree that Torun Gogoi's shadow will remain within the Assam Congress for a long time to come? Definitely, definitely. The ma majority of the leader are grown under the shadow of Torun Gogoi. And definitely, though he is not there, something like a father figure of the family, if he is the uh, head of the family is no more there, but still his presence is always in the mind. And I think that will enthuse the Congress worker and uh, to be a more dedicated to the party, reminding the uh, sacrifice or the hard work of Tarun Gogoi. And Tarun Gogoi will be always in the back, back of the mind of the every dedicated Congress worker. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Ghatwar, as a veteran party leader, what is your advice to your party colleagues, party leadership in Assam at this critical juncture? You see, any democracy, the people are the final, uh, they, they, they are the final authority. And we have to try to win over their blessing in the coming election. And the memory of the Torun Gogoi will be a unifying factor for all of us. And let us, I will tell them, let us dedicate our sincerity and hard work in the memory of Torun Gogoi to build up the Congress and, and try to enlist the support and blessing of the people of Assam. Absolutely. Very well said. Pradut Bodloy, final comments from you. Uh, your colleague, uh, Pabhan Singh Ghatwar, is appealing for rededication uh, in line with what Torun Gogoi taught about the party. Mr. Bodloy. Okay. Pradut Bordeloy's line is not the Kripchalia, your last words. Let's reconnect with uh, uh, Pradut Bordeloy for the final comments. Yes, See, uh, Mr. Kripchalia. <laughs> I'd like to be, I'd like to, on this sad day, go for a little humor and uh, join, uh, must, uh, I must contradict you in one small thing. See, last election, uh, assembly election in Assam, we didn't lose only because I'm anti-incumbency, but also because of a split in the Congress. I'm, I'm, you're talking about the, uh, the, in the Congress. Yeah. So I'm saying, don't forget that last election. There was a split year. in the Congress, yes. Number two, yes, everybody should follow. Uh, most of the uh, Ghatwar has said, yes, many people have come out of Tarun Gogoi's, because they were products of Tarun Gogoi. But don't forget that many of the products of Tarun Gogoi are now in an opposition party. I'm just, you know, this is, this is, yeah. these are facts of no, life. these are facts. Yeah, thirdly, are facts. thirdly, you know, 
uh, it was when Rajiv ji, Rajiv ji died. You know, P. V. Narasimha Rao said in the first uh, C. P. P. meeting, wherein we had the pleasure of uh, attending, mm -hmm. he said, "Days of charismatic leaders are over, and you must now all work as small, small leaders and go for a collective rebuild of the party." Now, this kind of uh, uh, suggestions are followed more in uh, ignoring them than in following. Absolutely. I think that is very well said there, Kirib Chalia. Uh, if Mr. Pradut Bordeloy can hear me, final comments from you, Mr. Pradut Bordeloy. Uh, Mr. Ghatuwar is talking that, that the Congress needs to rededicate themselves uh, in, to follow some of the ideals, some of the paths shown by veteran leaders like Torun Gogoi. Uh, yes, Pradut Bordeloy. See, Tarun Gogoi would always be an inspiration for us. But I can assure you, Vasbir, there will be a seamless transformation in the Congress Party. The Congress Party in Assam will carry on and we will hold aloft the Congress flag very strongly in the coming days. Absolutely, there is a very significant statement by Pradut Bordeloy who thinks that there would be a seamless transformation in the Congress party and they would be able to carry on with uh, the f holding their flag aloft. On that note, I end this edition of Notice tonight. I'd like to thank all my panelists for participating in the show and of course the viewers for watching it at the end of the day. Torn Gogo is no more but he his ideals are there for everyone to follow at the end of the day as i have said in the beginning torn gogoi himself got transformed from a congress leader to a lead jantaka leader and that is why perhaps people are cutting across the political and social spectrum gathered in hundreds and thousands to bid him a tearful adieu in the last two to three days on that note we once again wish you good night <laughs>